Yo, welcome back everybody to a brand new video here on the second channel. It is now time for the NEIC tier list. Of course, NEIC is next weekend. It's going to be a big tournament. We got Twilight Masquerade Legal, a whole new format. The format's actually shaken up quite a bit, and I am pretty excited here to do my tier list of where I think each deck lies in the meta going into this tournament, how good certain decks are, and all that stuff. I'm excited to talk about everything in today's video and really break down where I think the meta is right now at NAIC. Because like I said, things are pretty different right now with the way the format is, with all the new cards, and uh, really just how um, decks are being built right now. It's just really interesting, and it's definitely going to be a good time. If y'all are new to the second channel, make sure to subscribe down below. We're on the road to 15k subs, and uh, leave a like if you enjoy my tier list. Let me know what you think of it down below. I'll leave a link to the tier list also if you want to go try it for yourself in the description. But I think without further ado, let's get into the NEIC tier list. Now, we're going to start things off with Dragapult. Dragapult is obviously the new hyped deck out of the new set. It's the one that I think a lot of people are looking at the most as a potential BDIF contender. Now, personally, it's a little early to tell how good Dragapult EX really is. I don't know if I could call Dragapult any more than maybe just a tier one deck at the moment. I do think Dragapult is close to being one of the top decks in the format for sure. Um, it's definitely up there. I would put Dragapult as tier one. Wouldn't call Dragapult S tier quite yet. Going into the tournament, I think we're still trying to figure out the best way to play Dragapult, what the best lists are, but there's also decks out there that are countering Dragapult. I think Lugia, Gardevoir, even something like Blissey, um, Maridon, Raging Bolt, all these different decks right now that are popping up have a good Dragapult matchup, and I think that's a big deal. Dragapult kind of has a huge target on its head right now. That's kind of my issue with it. I do think Dragapult is extremely powerful and definitely should be respected. Um, it's definitely a tier one deck. Calling it the S tier BDIF of the format, I don't think is quite correct. I do think Dragapult is very strong, but we're also still trying to figure out the optimal 60, the best way to play it. I just don't think Dragapult can can, can be the BDIF right now. Post NEIC, things could change for sure, um, but we'll have to see on that one. Now, Lost Pult, uh, more probably of a tier two deck. I have actually seen a lot of people talk about Lost Zone Dragapult on Twitter and stuff. I think that's an interesting archetype. Basically, the idea of the deck is it plays like Sablezard, but you have the Dragapult in the deck too. So you get Draclo, you have a bit of a draw engine within your Lost Zone deck, which is kind of underrated. Um, and then also you get to play Dragapult EX, which synergizes really nicely with Sableye and even Kramer in two degrees. So I do think that Dragapult definitely has potential with the Lost Zone engine. I'm not sold on it just yet. I think that it's a bit of a clunky deck. I mean, playing Stage 2s in the Lost Zone, it's a little clunky in my opinion. I, that's my main issue with it. It's a little awkward. Honestly, if I were to play Lost Pult, I would probably lean more towards a Sablezard deck than actual Dragapult. Like, maybe I'll play, like, a 2-2-2 two, two, two Dragapult line with, like, one rare candy. Relying on finding rare candies, I, I don't know. I just think it's a little awkward to kind of pull off the Dragapult consistently. Um, I feel like also you have a worse mirror match against other Dragapult decks. That's my one issue with Lost Bolt too, is it feels like it's matchup into the mirror match feels kind of bad, right? I mean, you have a lot of compies in play. You do get access to Sableye, which is nice, but like you can't even like, you can't even spit Dragapult and then kill with your own Dragapult. It's like just, I don't know. It feels bad against Dragapult. That's my issue with the deck. It feels like it's worse. I think the one matchup that it actually fixes is your Raging Bolt matchup. Cause now you have all these one prizers like the Charizard, like the Cram and the Sable I duo. So maybe the deck is better against Raging Bull, but worse against the other Dragapult decks. That's my hot take with Lost Pult. I don't think the deck is like super amazing. I'm gonna put it in tier two for now. It's getting a little bit of buzz. It's not a bad idea. And in, in theory, in the concept, it definitely seems decent. It might even have a better Lugia matchup than regular Dragapult. Uh then we got Shempow. Uh I mean Seapow definitely has fallen quite a bit off of the meta. I mean, its main issues definitely are very glaring. It seems to be crippled pretty badly by Dragapult, especially if the optimal Dragapult list gets figured out and it aggressively can get Dragapult off turn two. Shampao will not stand a chance that often. Um, but Dra uh, Shampao definitely does have its other fair share of bad matchups. Its Dragapult matchup seems to be shaky, but I think it also has an abysmal Raging Bolt matchup. I think the Raging Bolt matchup is like, almost unwinnable if you're not maybe playing like Kyogre, to be honest, because Raging Bolt just destroys you. You can't reliably go first against Raging Bolt, Shivery Chill, and then your Shampoo just gets KO'd, and you're immediately behind two prize cards. I don't know if you can come back from that. Like, it's that bad. Raging Bolt definitely feels like it's a bad matchup for Shampoo. 
I also think that with Charizard falling off a little bit in popularity and in play, I think that also affects Shampao's play rate is because its best matchup is a bit worse. Now, I'm not saying Shampao is complete, like, just the worst deck ever, because it actually does have good matchups across the board and other archetypes. Like, I think its matchup against Lugia is pretty solid. I mean, you get Iron Hands. Shampao is actually one of the decks right now that actually gets to use Iron Hands the best, and that's a huge deal. Your Gardevoir matchup shouldn't be too bad either. That's another deck right now that's getting a lot of buzz. So I think that it does have its fair share of good and bad matchups. It's kind of in the middle. Um, I would maybe still put it in Tier 2, to be honest. I mean, Tier 3 might be a little too harsh for Shampao. Like, the deck isn't, like, completely dead or anything. It can adapt. You know, there's a lot of 70 HP Pokemon, like the Bidoofs and the Fridges, you can play to offset the fact that, you know, Dragapult's popular now. I mean, she, uh, Shampao's got to be okay, right? Like, it's it's fine. Definitely not as good as it used to be. The other problem is, too, Stall and Control are also looking really good this format. Those two decks also seem to have a good Shampao matchup. So it seems like Shampao has a lot of really bad matchups. Like, in theory, your Dragon Ball matchup might not be good. Your Stall Control matchup is bad. Your um, Raging Bolt matchup's pretty bad. I, those are three pretty rough matchups. So I'm not sold on Shampao right now. Tier 2 might be a little too nice. Honestly, it might be Tier 3. Like, the more I think about it, dude, it just its best matchups are Lugia and Gardevoir. And that's about it. Like, I feel like every other matchup's going to be, like, either 50-50 or hit or miss. So, like, I'm not too sure about Shampao, actually. Um, it, it might do good. I, I'm sure we'll see a couple of Shampoos in Day 2 at NEIC. Tier 3 might be a little too harsh for it, but I don't know if I would consider playing it in a field where, like, it has a lot of bad matchups. Um, next up is the Roy Moon Dunsparce deck. I feel like another deck that's fallen off quite a bit. Um, I don't know if this deck has a good Dragable matchup. I think its Raging Bull matchup is probably a little shaky, because, yeah, you can Frenzy Gouging their Raging Bolts, but they can, like, respawn kill you with uh, Sandy Shocks, which is kind of annoying. I guess, like, you can knock out the Teal Mask Ogre Ponds with Calamity Storm. Um, but the other issue is the deck doesn't play enough ancient Pokemon, or I feel like you're never reliably one-shotting Raging Bolt quick enough with the Baby Moon. Um, I also think your Dragapult matchup seems a little awkward. You can Frenzy Gouging their Dragapults, but, like, that's really good for them, because then they can, like, abuse Countercatcher and stuff and knock out your, um, your Moons on the bench pretty easily by, like, gusting around you and putting the Roy Moon on the bench and then knocking it out with Phantom Dive, taking, like, a three-prize turn. That's my issue with the deck. Dunsparce is not as good anymore because of Dragapult being able to kill the Dunsparces. Like, it does have a lot of weaknesses right now. It's probably like Shempao, where, like, the deck definitely falls down a peg or two because of the new decks that came out. Um, next up is Lost Zone Giratina. I mean, right now, it seems like a stable Tier 2 deck. Like, it's, it's like, the most, like, perfectly fine deck in the format, in my opinion. Um, it seems to be, like, okay, in theory, it should be decent against Dragapult. Yes, you do have Comfies in your deck, but you can play Maximum Belt. You can, you have Star Requiem at your disposal. You do have ways to actually just deal with Dragapult. And you can also use Ursa Luna in the deck now. Now you have a really good late-game attacker with Ursa Luna. Um, I mean, Giratina honestly feels like it could be getting better with this new format. It's just a little underrated. Honestly, Giratina could be one of the most underrated decks in the meta right now, to be honest with you. It feels like Giratina could be a fine deck we'll have to see it seems to be okay into like maybe control i think your matchup against charizard is still good like if you still happen to hit against if you still haven't hit charizard hey you got a good charizard matchup obviously i guess you're not playing leaves anymore though which offsets that but if you're playing max belt it kind of cancels each other out i guess in a way um yeah i don't know giratina seems okay i think your lugia matchup and guardy matchups are going to be a little sketchy though gardevoir now having monkey dory and Cresselia is kind of annoying. Lugia seems like it could be a bad matchup, too, just because they have Sinchino and Iron Hands, which might mess you up. You can play Temple of Sinnoh, which if, I think if you're playing Tina, you have to play at least two Temple of Sinnoh to beat Lugia. I, I Giratina feels okay. It seems like it's an underrated deck, um, and in theory, it might have a good draggable matchup, but I haven't tested it yet, obviously. Uh, Ancient Box... I feel like it's also, like, Tier 3. It, it, it's kind of like where Shampao and Roaring Moon is. It's, like, it's fallen down a few pegs because it feels like it's gotten some worse matchups. I guess, actually, that's a lie. Maybe it's actually better than I thought. Actually, no. You know what? Tier 2 might be a better place for this deck. I actually think Ancient Box might be better than Roaring Moon Dunsparce. Roaring Moon Dunsparce feels like it might be worse into Dragapult, where Ancient Box, I still don't think your Dragapult matchup is, like, spectacular, but it, it might be better than Roaring Moon um, plus, you just have a good Guardian matchup. That's, I think, the big deal. You have a really good Guardian matchup. You probably have a good Raging Bolt matchup, too. So, you have two good matchups with Guardian and Raging Bolt. That does help Ancient Box a little bit. Yeah, Ancient Box actually might be better than I give it credit for. Maybe Roy Moon Dunsparce is better than I give it credit for, too. Because you can play Temple of Sinnohs in the deck to beat Lugia. Your Guardian matchup's also still probably fine. Um, yeah, honestly, these two decks could be both side-by-side. Side. I think I would rather pick Ancient Box over Roy Moon Dunsparce, though, if I had to choose which deck to play. 
overall, but I don't know. Maybe the, maybe Roman Dunsparce and Ancient Box are like both clumped in tier two, but I don't know. Re, re, Ancient Box actually seems like it's an okay deck right now. Um, Gardevoir, tier one. I think Gardevoir is definitely one of the top decks right now in our new format. It's looking pretty good. It should have a good Lugia matchup. Your matchup against Dragapult seems to be good thanks to Cresselia and Monkey Dory. Uh, your Raging Bolt matchup is also very favorable. I think you have those good matchups across the board. I mean, maybe your Charizard matchup's pretty bad. Your Lost Zone matchup could be a little sketchy, too. Um, I don't know. It doesn't seem like it's an okay deck. I actually think that Gardevoir is well-positioned for NEIC. I think a lot of players do acknowledge that, that Gardevoir is in a pretty good spot right now. You also have Unfair Stamp, which you could play also, which makes the deck a bit better. All right, we got Lugia. I'm going to be honest with you. If there was to be any deck in the format that is considered S tier right now, I think you have to give it to Lugia. I legit think Lugia is actually a huge meta threat right now. Lugia seems ridiculous with these new upgrades. Dude, Carmine and Legacy Energy make the deck infinitely better. To be honest, Lugia feels like it's um it, it feels like it's not as good as it used to be, obviously, from the old format, the Silver Tempest meta. But Lugia actually feels like it's kind of going back to its old ways with Legacy Energy. Now you basically have the Amazing Rare Raikou with the Wellspring Ogre Pond if you want to play that. And you have the Stoutland in the deck with the Iron Hands EX. You kind of, It kind of feels like Lugia is going back to how it used to be played in the old format. And that's actually a big deal. Now, it's not as consistent as it used to be, obviously. But you do have one AKO potential with Sinchino. You have an extra prize advantage with both Wellspring Ogre Pond and Iron Hands. That seems like a good sell. You also get Ursa Luna, which is another really good card for the deck. Ursa Luna's fantastic in the deck. I mean, Lugia legit feels like it could be an S-tier deck. Like, I'm going to be honest with you. I have Lugia very high on my radar of decks to watch out for at any IC. I legit think Lugia is potentially the best deck in the format right now. And I think that it is legit one you have to respect. It does have its glaring weaknesses. Like, you can play Enhanced Hammer and Temple of Sinnoh. Lugia is not very consistent as it used to be. Like, obviously, you're going to have those classic Lugia draws. It seems to be a bit of a bricky deck sometimes, but I don't know, man. Lugia definitely terrifies me. It feels like if Lugia gets to set up, the deck almost can't lose. Like, it has the ability to do so much, and it actually feels very scary right now. Uh, next up are the Arc decks. I'm not going to lie. Arc feels like it has gotten a lot weaker due to the fact that it has a bad Lugia matchup. It has... a Potentially a bad Guardian matchup, I'm going to be honest with you, if you're not playing Lost Cities. And I think your matchup against Raging Bolt is also really bad. You can't one-shot Raging Bolt with Maximum Belted Arceus with a double turbo, and that is a very big deal. They're just going to run you over super quickly. They could donk your lone Arceus V. I don't know if I would be sleeping up Arceus at NEIC with how popular Raging Bolt and Lugia are both looking to be. So I'm going to be honest with you. I think we're going to have to start putting a lot of the Arc piles in the rogue bad category. I'm going to say that though, Arc Tina, Arc Armor Rouge, and Arc Grabbers are probably still tier three at the very least. Like they're not the worst decks you can play. And to be fair, Arceus can now play Blood Moon Ursa Luna, which is not a bad upgrade to the deck. I think Blood Moon Ursa Luna is a really nice addition to the deck. If I'm playing Arc though, I'm probably going to have to start figuring out how I'm going to be countering Lugia and Gardevoir. Those decks do seem to be pretty bad matchups for you. Lugia just always farms you. Um, and then, of course, Gardevoir. I feel like Gardevoir, if you're not playing Lost Cities, I think Gardevoir still beats you. They have Scream Tails. They can snipe your Bibberols. Drifloon can one-shot all your V-Stars. Yeah, that feels like a bad matchup. So I definitely think that Arc is not in the best position right now due to the decks. And obviously, Raging Bolt seems to be an abysmal matchup. Um, the one thing I'll say, though, like I said, you should have a good Dragapult matchup. I haven't played it yet myself, but in theory, Arceus should have a good Raging Bolt, or not Raging, Dragapult matchup, sorry. Yeah, Arceus, in theory, should have a good Dragapult matchup. I haven't tested it yet. It does feel like that matchup could be close. Um, you might have to start playing 70 HP so though, um, in your Arc decks because Dragapult can knock out your b -doofs. But if you get to set up Bibberals, I feel like that matchup isn't terrible. Like, I actually think Arc could be okay against Dragapult. I actually think all three different variations of Arc here, the Grabber build, the Tina build, and the Armor Rouge build, all have potential to be, um, decent into Dragapult, in my opinion. But we'll have to see on that one. But I don't know, man. You're taking losses to, like, three of the best decks right now. Like, I don't know if I, I don't know if I would sleep up Arc. Dude, imagine playing Arc, and then round one, you, you hit Raging Bolt, you start Arc Attach Pass, they donk you twice in a row. Doesn't feel good. Because you're playing Arc, you have to go first. Raging Bolt wants to go second. Like, bro, what the heck? Doesn't seem good. Speaking of Raging Bolt, I mean, I mean, it's tier one, okay? I mean, I, I clowned on the deck a little bit on Twitter. It definitely feels like it is very, very powerful right now. It definitely feels like a top five deck in the format by far. Raging Bolt is in a pretty good spot right now heading into NEIC. It's also going to be extremely popular. It's just a very simple 
fun blow up the active type deck like you don't have to really think too much when you're playing this deck yeah there's a lot of sequencing you do have to know with the deck but at the end of the day it's a pretty easy deck like it's probably easier to play than even lugia for that matter like it's a pretty straightforward deck you're gonna win a lot of games because your opponent just can't keep up with the pressure you put on you can take KOs on the first turn of the game you're always as long as you're consistently drawing like well you should easily take a knockout every single turn of the game now raging bolt does have weaknesses like iono and unfair stamp seem pretty bad uh charizard x radiant charizard are both issues for the deck too i don't even know if you actually have a bad charizard matchup i feel like if you donk charizard pretty consistently like if you're taking knockouts every turn you should be okay that's the main issue though raging bolt does face though is radiant charizard um, but all, overall, I think Raging Bolt is not in a bad spot. It does have weird matchups, though. Like, I think your Lugia matchup's kind of close. Um, if Lugia gets to set up against you, I think Lugia does win most of the time because they have Sanchino and they have the Ursaluna. But if you can take like, the first two prizes, I think you should be okay against Lugia. Gardevoir is a bad matchup. I think that's your worst matchup by far is Gardevoir. Um, but yeah, Raging Bolt, I think it's fine. Like, even if you hit a bad matchup, you can win the game by just being faster than them and putting so much pressure on them every single turn that they just can't keep up sometimes. That honestly is how Raging Bolt does win games. It's definitely a top five deck. I don't know. It's it's fine. It does have weaknesses, but I think that it's still just such a fast and powerful deck that it can overcome those weaknesses. Dialga, probably tier two. I think Dialga's fine. I mean, it can adapt. You have 70 HP Beldums now. Um, you might lose a bit of consistency because the 6 HP Beldum does have that good attack that can guarantee a card on top of your deck, which is nice. But, I mean, Dialga seems okay. It doesn't seem like Dialga's in a bad spot right now in our format. Um, honestly, it seems like it could be decent into some of the big decks right now. Your Lugia matchup might be pretty bad. Your Guardi matchup might be bad too, but I feel like you're okay into Ogre Pond if they don't take the first two prizes. I feel like you're good into Dragapult because you can one-shot Dragapult pretty easily with Metal Blast. Yeah, I don't know. Dialga doesn't seem like a bad deck right now. I feel like if you set up, you can beat almost anything in the format. Um, except for maybe Gardevoir and Lugia. And maybe that's like a lie. But yeah, Dialga actually seems like it's still fine. I'm going to put in Tier 2. It's still another deck. I wouldn't be surprised if it did decent at NAIC. That's kind of where I stand with Dialga. All right. Lost Box. I think it's another Tier 2 deck. Uh, kind of like Dialga. Or like, it was good in the past format, but it definitely gets knocked down a few pegs due to the new decks coming out. But honestly, Lost Box doesn't seem bad. I think your matchup into Lugia's... On it. Okay, actually, I don't know. The Lugia matchup's kind of scary because basically you have to get a knockout on a Lugia V first or else you you lose. Because they, Lugia takes the first two prizes against you. I think you just lose that matchup unless you're playing Temple of Sinnoh. Um, I don't know. Lost Box seems okay, though. I think that his matchup against Raging Bolt, pretty solid. You have Ursa Luna, which is pretty good. I think your matchup against Gardevoir shouldn't be bad. If you're playing Roaring Moon and Iron Hands, I think, and Sableye, Gardevoir no longer plays... Um, Jirachi at the moment, so you can use Sableye a lot more reliably now. Plus, you do get access to um, Iron Bundle if, you know, if you're scared of Fluttermane. Your Lugia matchup, in theory, should be good, right? Because you are able to KO Lugia Vs really quickly. You have Iron Hands, which is good. Yeah, Lost Box seems like it's in an okay spot right now. I'm not going to lie. It seems decent. It's definitely a deck that always can adapt to the format. And with the addition of Ursa Luna, I think the deck definitely gets a little bit better thanks to that. So, yeah, it's not bad. It definitely gets knocked down a few pegs from the past format. But it definitely doesn't seem bad. The one issue I have with the deck is that Dragapult matchup. I feel like your Dragapult matchup is not very good. If they get Dragapult off turn two, I don't know if you can win. I mean, yeah, you have a Frenzy Gouging if you're playing the Roaring Moon, which can help a little bit. But I feel like if Dragapult sets up, it's really tough to beat, especially if you can't stand up to the Dragapult in time with the Roaring Moon. That's my main issue with Lost Box. Your Dragapult matchup is pretty bad. And I don't know if you want to be taking a bad Dragapult matchup right now. Um, next up is Maridon. Maridon's probably tier two. It did win the Champions League, but like to me, I feel like Maridon is a worse Raging Bolt deck. Um, where it's another like turbo big basic deck that has one big advantage. It does have the ability to use Iron Hands. Raging Bolt doesn't have Iron Hands, but honestly, I feel like I would rather just play Raging Bolt at that point. Maridon is a little bit more luck based than Raging Bolt. It relies extremely heavily on Electric Generator, where Raging Bolt doesn't care about Electric Generator. It just it, it draws so many cards. Raging Bolt is more consistent than Maridon at chaining attacks. I'm going to say it right now. Maridon is a little bit too much of a luck-based deck. I'm not saying that it's never not lucky. I mean, sometimes your generators are going to be hitting, but, like, it feels like it's just a less consistent version of Raging Bolt. The only upside is you get Iron Hands EX. It does have a really good Lugia matchup, though. I'll say that. Like, if you want to play a deck that probably just farms Lugia, Maridon probably is the best deck for the for that tournament. Blissey, Tier 3. I think Blissey is mid i know a lot of people are like liking it right now but apart from probably just a good dragon matchup i think literally like every other deck in potentially even tier two 
is a bad matchup. Like, let's be real. You're not beating Gardevoir, probably. You're probably not beating Raging Bolt. Raging Bolt destroys you. Lugia, you're probably not beating. Sinchino destroys you. Um, Tina, you probably can't beat Giratina. Uh, Ancient Box is an abysmal matchup, too, probably. Dialga is a bad matchup. Lost Box is a bad matchup because uh, they can Frenzy Gouge and Hoopa you. I guess you can beat Maridon. Yeah, Blissey's Blissey, mid. It's it's fine. It's like an okay deck. It has an okay draggable matchup. That's about it. I think Blissey's like a mediocre deck. If somebody figures out a good way to play Blissey, I'm sure Blissey could get better, but definitely it's it feels like just an Arceus V-Star deck, right? It just feels like, okay, maybe you have a good matchup with a Dragapult, and everything else just feels weak. It's, it literally just feels like an Arceus V-Star deck, and I at that point, I'd rather play Arceus. You know what I mean? So, Charizard, baby. Uh, Charizard's bordering between Tier 1 and 2, in my opinion. I'm going to put it at the top of Tier 2. I think Charizard is on the border of both being a Tier 1 and a Tier 2 deck. Charizard definitely feels like it could be good against Gardevoir. Your Raging Bull matchup, hopefully, in theory, should be good, because you have Charizard and Radiant Charizard, which are both really good against that deck. Your Lugia matchup might be pretty bad, though, because of Sinchino. Uh, your Dragon Ball matchup, in theory, isn't very good either. I think that's one of the big things right now, is can Charizard even beat Dragapult? I do think that Charizard actually could still be a top deck in the format. Legit, it could be a top five deck in the format after NEIC. But going into NEIC, bro, I don't know if I'd put much stock in Charizard. I'm sure somebody's going to do well with it. I think that it's bordering Tier 1, just barely making Tier 2. That's probably where I'd place Charizard right now. It's like in between Tier 1 and 2. It's like a Tier 1.5 deck, actually, if that even is a thing. Uh, Fussful deck, probably Rogue. It's got a bad deep hole matchup. I guess, like, maybe it's okay into Lugia, but Lugia has Iron Hands and... I don't know if that's even good. Like, Iron Hands farms you, right? I mean, it's a festival deck. It's a good meme. It should beat Raging Bolt. Probably beats Gardevoir. Loses to Dragapult. I don't know. It's like, it's a meme deck, obviously. It's just a rogue deck, right? It's like United Wings, you know. Spathra. Um, definitely tier three. Spathra definitely did get bumped down a peg or two because it definitely loses some, you know, good matchups with Charizard getting worse. Um, I guess, like, maybe you're okay into... Dragapult, if you can set up, but Dragapult just destroys you. I feel like you just have a bad matchup against Dragapult, Lugia, Gardevoir, and Raging Bolt. I don't know if I'm going to be taking losses to, like, the four best decks in the format right now. Raging Bolt can destroy you pretty easily, in my opinion. Gardevoir doesn't really care about his Pathor's ability. Dragapult maybe is winnable, but, like, you have 30 HP basics or 50 HP basics. Like, your setup is so, like, fragile. I feel like you just get destroyed by Dragapult. And then I think Lugia just runs you over because Lugia can just go four energy knockout. You know what I mean? So I don't think his path is very good. Honestly, I might even consider calling it a, a bad deck at the moment. Yeah, I mean, I guess like it's okay into some of the tier two decks like Ancient Box, Charizard might be okay. Yeah, it's probably more of a rogue bad deck than anything else. Like maybe you'll be okay into Maridon. But like if you're not beating like the four best decks, why are you even in tier three? Okay, that's like definitely a rogue deck. Yeah, okay. Yeah, his path is pretty bad. Um... Future Box, Rogue, bad. It does have the ability to, like, try to play Iron Thorns now. So you have a little bit more type coverage, and you have the Iron Thorns, which isn't bad, but it's more of a Rogue deck. Goldengo's probably Tier 3. Um, I would imagine Goldengo's okay into Raging Bolt. Maybe okay into Charizard. Decent into Gardevoir. Maybe okay into Dragapult 2. I don't know if Goldengo is good against other decks, so, like, Control and Stall doesn't seem very good. Um... I like Goldengo. I'm going to say it's a tier 3 deck. Like, definitely bordering the rogue bad category. But Goldengo, you never count Goldengo out. Um, I don't know. It, it, if you can set up against Dragapult, it's not too bad. You have 7 HP Gimme Ghouls, which does make that matchup a lot more tolerable. Because you can also easily KO the Dragapults with uh, the Goldengo. You have Palkia V-Star, which can put on a decent amount of pressure. Um, I guess your Lugia matchup's pretty bad, though. Because I don't know. Because Sinchino is just really hard to deal with. Well, actually, I guess you can just knock out the Minchinos with Greninja, right? So, I don't know. Maybe Goldengo's better than I thought. I'll, I'll call it a tier 3 deck. Uh, control. I'm going to put Control in Tier 1. I do think that Control, uh, where it stands, definitely has potential to be one of the best decks in the format right now. If somebody can figure out how to fix these matchups, I think Pidgeot Control is really good. We've been seeing Pidgeot Control actually start to do pretty good in the online tournaments. They're really adding some technology. One of the big technology pieces that Pidgeot Control is now putting in the deck is a Great Tusk, which for one fighting, you can do 40. You put a Defiance Band on it. You can actually knock out Sinchino in one hit. So Pidgeot Control is starting to figure out how to beat its worst matchup in Lugia. But can it be Dragapult? Can it be Gardevoir? Can it be Raging Bolt? Those are all questions Pidgeot Control needs to answer. I do think Control's in a good spot. It's also carrying over from a really good um, last tournament with LA Regionals. And I think a lot of players are going to be looking at Pidgeot Control for NEIC due to how well it performed in the last format. So I think Pidgeot Control is legit a Tier 1 deck right now. It definitely feels like it is very, very powerful. Um, 
Gouging Fire is probably tier three. It's a nice, like, big, basic beep stick deck. So basically, it's like Maridon, right? It's like a fire version of Maridon. Probably better than Maridon over Raging Bull. Like, it's, it's definitely worse than Raging Bull, but better than Maridon, maybe. But it doesn't have Iron Hands. So it's probably tier three. Greninja is also probably like tier three. I it's probably gonna be a rogue bad deck by the time NSC wraps up. I don't know if Greninja has what it takes to stand up to the format. You have a pretty bad Guardi matchup, and you might have a bad Lugia matchup too. So, and a bad Raging Bull matchup. You're taking bad matches to three of the top decks. Really, would you want to play Greninja in that in that environment? Sablezard, um, probably tier three. I think Sablezard is a worse turbo loss box deck because you don't have the turbo at your disposal, so you might lose to Dragapult a lot harder. Um, it's not terrible. It's actually been doing okay in online tournaments. It's playing Monkey Dory now, which is a nice upgrade of the deck. It does help your Dragapult matchup a little bit. I don't know if I can call Sablezard, like, a great deck, though. It's, like, it's fine. I'd rather just play Turbo at that point, though, because then you get um, Gouging Fire. Or, like, Roaring Moon, sorry. You get Roaring Moon. You get Frenzy Gouging, is what I meant to say. Um, Bayonet. Uh, Item Lock is in an interesting position right now. Probably more of a tier three deck. I feel like it's a deck no one's really looking at, but I think item lock's not in a bad spot. I mean, item lock could be good against deep bolt. Um, I don't know if you're beating raging bolt though. You're probably beating control though, and maybe Charizard. Bayonet doesn't seem terrible. I mean, Steam Power not being very good right now doesn't do much for Bayonet decks though. Bibzard's probably tier three. Like just play Pidgeyzard, dude. It's a better deck. I guess Bibzard might be better than a raging bolt though, because you could create a one prize board state a lot more easily. Maybe that's the only good thing about the deck. But, like, Pidgey's Arch is better. Just always play Pidgey's Arch. Um, honestly, Control Stall feels like it's both Tier 1. Like, kind of clumping them together. They both feel like they're just very powerful decks right now. Snorlax is kind of insane now that it has that new Flute card. And, yeah, Snorlax definitely feels like it could be a Tier 1 deck. You just play a bunch of Temple Sinnohs. And that Lugia matchup actually isn't as bad as you might expect. So, yeah, Snorlax feels pretty good. Once it figures out how to beat Dragapult, I think, yeah, Snorlax definitely is a pretty good deck going into NEIC. I am kind of scared. Like, honestly, going into NEIC, if you're playing a deck that takes an auto loss to control install decks, don't play that deck. I legit am saying that Snorlax and Pidgeot are both going to be very good decks for NEIC. They're not going to be popular, but good players are going to play them. And I think that will warrant, a, if you go deep in the tournament, you might hit a controller stall deck. You know, it's, it's going to be out there, right? Do not lose to Snorlax, in my opinion. Going into NEIC, your deck should have a way to beat Snorlax. I'm just going to say right now, you need to have an answer to Snorlax. Snorlax is a scary deck with that new Flute card. That Flute card is ridiculous. It's very hard to deal with. It's very tough. Snorlax is a deck you need to respect, in my opinion, going into NEIC. Um, Great Tusk Mill, Rogue, Bad. I mean, okay, it does gain Flute too, I guess, but I don't know. It just, I don't know. It's okay. It's not bad. It probably loses Dragapult and Lugia. Uh, Future Hands. Iron Hands honestly kind of feels like it's somewhere between two and three. Um, you have a bad Raging Bolt matchup, in my opinion, because you do struggle to hit high numbers on those Raging Bolts. Um, your Drag Up Bolt matchup honestly doesn't seem bad, though, because you are able to use Amp every single turn, most likely. Your Lugia matchup is free. You have, like, an insanely good Lugia matchup. Um, your Control matchup's bad. Your Stall matchup's bad. We saw at any, or we saw at LA Regionals how that went. The deck doesn't have enough answers to your Iron Crowns being trapped. Um... Your Guardi matchup's good. You have a good Guardi matchup, a good Lugia matchup. That does seem appealing to me, in my opinion. But, I mean, at the same time, you're taking a bad stall control matchup. Your Raging Bull matchup seems bad because you, you it's really tough to arm press KO them, in my opinion. Um, you have to just fill your board with modifiers, right? And I don't know if that's enough to keep up in that matchup. Your Dragon Bull matchup seems okay, too. I mean, yeah, I don't know. The, the deck feels okay. It's maybe like a Tier 2 deck. Like, honestly, it might just be better than Maridon. Like, I'm going to be honest with you. Future Hands might just be a better Maridon. I'm going to put that in Tier 2. It might be better than Maridon. Finally, we have the Reggie Drago deck. I think this deck is kind of cool. For now, I'll put it in Tier 2. It's actually doing decent in the online tournaments right now. This deck definitely feels like it actually has some potential in the format. It's a deck that can easily get Turn 2 Drago pulled off. That's something to definitely respect in the format. And Reggie Drago does have a lot of options because you do have all these different Dragon Pokemon. You have Noivern, Gudra, Giratina. I've even seen them play Raging Bolt themselves. Yeah, I know. Like, Reggie Drago, Teal Mask, Ogre Pond is a cool idea. It definitely feels like a Maridon style deck where, like, if it sets up, it goes off, it feels good. But other than that, it might just be kind of hit or miss. But I don't know. I wouldn't count Reggie Drago, Ogre Pond out quite yet. It does feel like it might be, like, an okay archetype in the meta right now. For now, I'll call it Tier 2. Probably a post NEIC. If it doesn't do well, it's a Tier 3 deck. But it is a cool deck, and it does have the ability to attack with Dragapult on the second turn of the game pretty easily, which is honestly really, really good. So... 
there you have it. That is my tier list for NEIC. I think Lugia is probably BDIF. I think it's a very good deck. Dragapult seems to be really good too. Gardevoir, Raging Bolt. Those are like your four big decks right now. In my opinion, going to this tournament, you have to at least beat two of the top four decks in the format. And definitely respect control. Like, even if your deck might not have the best control matchup, don't just immediately be like, go into this tournament, like, I'm going to lose to a deck that can, you know, trap something in the active. Don't do that. At least have a way to beat those decks. Like, that's my take for NEIC. I'm very excited for this tournament. I definitely am cooking up what the play is going to be. I'm super excited, and I hope you all are ready for NEIC, too. It's going to be a fun time. I cannot wait. I got more NEIC content here coming out on the channel very soon. Um, yeah, so definitely stay tuned for that. Hope to see you all there. I'll leave a link to the tier list down below in the description if you want to go try for yourself. Let me know what you think of the meta right now. Where would you place any of these decks in the format? Let me know down in the description below. That'll be for me. If you all enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe down below. Help me the road to reaching 15k subs here, and I'll see you on another video. Have a good day. Bye-bye.